Whenever the full moon's out, you might think that all astronomy is lost, but that's not necessarily the case. Even during full moon, you can do some really nice moon observing and identifying of different craters and features that you never thought were possible. Now, if you're doing deep sky imaging, of course, full moon is not the time that you want to be doing that. But if you're a double star observer or somebody that likes to look at the moon and all of its dynamic features and phases, then the full moon can certainly be good for you. So let's get started and let's see what we can identify with this small little telescope. Welcome back everybody for another video. Like I said, tonight we're almost full moon. We're gonna be checking out the moon with this 80 millimeter refractor here that I've got on my Ioptron Cube. This is an Orion Short Tube 80. Very popular, very inexpensive. It's certainly not a high-end model or ED glass or any of those fancy features tonight. But this is pretty much to identify that you can look at the moon and get really solid observing of the moon's different features, the mare, the craters, the valleys, everything that the moon has to offer us, even with a telescope of this size. Tonight I'm going to be using the Sky and Telescope Field Guide map. This is a nice laminated, bendable, four-part little moon atlas you can see here that gives us the full moon. And it's divided into quadrants, so you can just fold it and be observing whichever side. And then on the back side of this, it has all of the crater names and their sizes. You can see on this side here, it just has a little, little chart like that on the bottom that will show you all of the different names and the sizes. Now I picked this up, it's relatively inexpensive, but this is going to be our bread and butter for tonight for observing with the moon with this little guy. We are almost full moon. We've got a slight terminator on the very, very edge of the moon tonight. So we're going to be looking along that rim to see what features are available. But we're also going to take notice of what is already in the sunlight. Things called mare or seas in Latin. We're going to be taking a look at those, identifying which ones you can see. And some of them are actually even bright enough that you can identify them with your eyes without needing one of these to help you through a telescope. Now, because the moon is so bright, obviously, you don't need a red light anymore. We can just use our regular white lights for this. I have my headlamp on because I'm gonna be looking at this moon atlas here as we go along here. And we're gonna start at the very top of the moon, okay? We're gonna start at the side, the very top that has already been illuminated by the sun. And we're gonna start going through some of the features that we are going to potentially be able to see in the full sunlight side of the full moon right now. At first glance, we're gonna notice that it's flipped left to right. This is by design of a refractor telescope, and that's okay. We expect that from using a refractor. But what we're gonna take a look at first tonight is at the very top of the moon, there's a gray, kind of a circle looking feature there, and that is called a mare. A mare meaning seas in Latin. This is where an impact crater struck the moon and filled up with lava when the moon was still active at its core and still had lava within underneath the crust of the moon. So what happened was after that impact, all that force allowed lava to fill up inside of that impact crater, creating mare or seas of lava. So as it's hardened, you can tell it's just a gray, it kind of looks featureless. But if we notice, if we look at Mare Crisium though, we can actually see a few impact craters on top of the surface. So those impact craters happened later after the lava had cooled and hardened. Now the moon has not really been active for probably three to five billion years ago at this point. So these impact craters are still very, very old. There's really nothing new that is happening on the moon. So looking just below Mare Crisium here, we're gonna notice a really bright crater. And according to my chart here, that crater is Proclus. And that crater, if we notice here, has rays coming off of it. That means it hit with such force that all that material that got ejected from the impact fell all over the moon there. And we can see predominantly three very straight lines of rays. And this is basically aftermath material that settled 
on the moon in these directions from all the force. If we look a little bit further south, directly below that crater, the mare that is located right below Mare Crisium is Mare Tranquillitatis, or the Sea of Tranquility. If we look towards the left, that is Mare Fecunditatis, and then if we look towards the right of Tranquillitatis, that is Mare Serenitatis. Now, of course, you can see a tons of craters that are looped out and around all of these different features. Some are just completely full and some have really interesting shapes and structures to them. The shapes of these craters, of course, was determined by the angle that they struck the moon. Most of these craters struck head-on, which gives you a circular appearance, but if they struck at slight angles, of course you can have some elongated craters that of course can look a little bit more interesting through the eyepiece. Looking directly to the right of Mare Serenitatis, if we go down just a little bit, is this huge Mare that we notice here. And it's got a nice bit of light and dark patches that cover the Mare itself. But you'll notice a very dominant crater up there at the top. That's the crater Plato. Now looking right below Plato is a very large Mare. And this is called Mare Imbrium. And Mare Imbrium is almost 700 miles wide at the diameter. It is massive on the moon, but it's still not the largest, though, that we can actually see tonight. Now, Mare Imbrium is very easy to spot with the naked eye, of course, because it is so large. And looking right on the bottom of it, you can see a huge crater that has lots of rays coming out of it. That is the crater Copernicus. Copernicus is located almost towards the center of the moon. You can see it when it's almost half moon usually is when you get a really good look at Copernicus. Copernicus is a crater that struck after almost all of the Mare were there. That's why it almost looks like it struck on top of everything else because all of the rays and all of the material are spread out all over the moon in that region. So even though Copernicus is quite large, it's actually one of the latest of the impact strikes. Now, Copernicus is interesting because it has a central ridge that came back up. So after the impact of the crater, it basically refracted some material right back up into the center of the crater. And I have photographed this many times, and it's a wonderful crater to photograph because it has lots of ridges on the side, and it has that central peak that comes back up in the middle, and it has lots of rays that you can see during full moon. So it's a very dynamic crater that we can see. And again, it is quite large, certainly larger than Plato. Now, when we look up towards Plato again, we notice there is another mare up there, but it's not very well contrasted like the rest of them are. This is Mare Frigoris. It lies towards the North Pole of the moon, and so it's kind of harder to see, but it certainly is still there, and sometimes with libration, which means the moon kind of wobbles a little bit from month to month. So it kind of, you know, jiggles around as it rotates around us every month. You can kind of get a little bit of a better view of Mare Frigoris, or some months when it tilts back a little bit, it's almost gone. So the moon is certainly interesting every single month because it does change its appearance to us. Now looking to the left of Copernicus, we see this massive crater that is just smack dab in the bed of the moon down here with all kinds of rays that just radiate all over the surface of the moon. This is Tycho. This is one of the most famous craters on the moon. Now Tycho is famous for its rays. During the normal half moon or just past half moon when you can really see Tycho, you don't really get a lot of the rays. Rays are only visible during really full moon or after that part of the moon has really started to lighten up. But Tycho is certainly famous for this. And every time you look at the moon through a telescope, particularly a full moon, you'll always notice Tycho and Copernicus are probably two of the most dominant features on the moon at that time. Now, when we look through here and we look at Tycho, when we look directly to the right, we see another mare. This is Mare Nubium. And then right below it, going towards the Terminator, is Mare Humorum. And again, this one's even smaller than the last one. But if we go towards the right, and we go underneath Copernicus, and we see this wide open mare that's in there, 
That is the largest mare that we have on the moon. And this one is called Oceanus Procellarum. And this is a massive mare that stretches almost 1,600 miles wide. So there's a lot of lava that filled in there and has since cooled off and is now almost featureless. But when you have a bigger telescope and larger instruments, you can zoom in to notice finer details and craters within all of these mare that happened afterwards. But now we're going to take a look at the Terminator. And we're going to take a look at the Terminator starting in Oceanus Procellarum. And we're going to work our way down to around Tycho's area to see what craters are actually visible. Even though it's just about full moon, we're at about 95%, but that doesn't mean that we can't still see something for craters on the edge of the moon. One of the things that we notice right on the right side about 4 o'clock is Schroeder's Valley. This is an area, a little sort of a mountain range a short of area, that had a lava flow that goes through. There's a valley there that you can notice a real system that kind of squiggles through out to where one of those craters are. And this used to be an active lava flow that is no longer, but that is one of the brightest things there on that side down there about four o'clock. As we look down here towards the bottom, we're going to notice there's two craters that are kind of sitting right next to each other. One still has kind of a dramatic shadow and the other one doesn't. The one that doesn't is called Hevelius and the other one is called Cavalarius, and these two craters sit right on the edge and sometimes we can't really see them. If we look just to the left of them, we kind of see what looks like another mare, but that's not another mare, that is the crater Grimaldi. And this crater is quite wide. This one's actually about a hundred miles wide. If we continue on towards the very, very bottom, we see some very interesting shaped craters down there, some elongated looking craters. This is the crater Darwin that's down here, almost at straight down. You can see the mountain ridges are being lit up there on the very edges. That's why we have some areas that are light and dark right on the edge of the Terminator there. Those are the mountain ridges being illuminated by basically sunrise on the moon for that sort of that area we go a little further, we can see a really large crater there on the very edge. This is the crater Bailey. This crater is almost 200 miles wide. So this is also a very, very large crater. Now, Bailey is a hard one because of what I explained earlier about libration. When the moon wants to tip down a little bit, Bailey goes completely underneath. We can't see it. And then when the moon tilts back a little bit, we see it rise up from the bottom a little bit like we're seeing it right here. I hope this video was fun for you guys to follow along and explore, and I hope that you too get a chance to look at the full moon and identify a lot of these different things. Until next time, clear skies, and I'll see you soon.